This example program can be downloaded from modernrobotics.edu.com in the Color Sensor section. I want to quickly go over this program and how it works conceptually because it gives you a new ability. The Color Sensor for Modern Robotics has a color number function inside of it where it gives you a number representing a section of the color spectrum instead of having to do math comparing your red, green, and blue values. If you haven't yet seen it, please uh, go check out first the color sensor general video about how the color sensor works. It'll give you a lot of context about this video. But the classes set up by FTC do not allow access to the color number register. So uh, writing your code this way using just raw I2C reads and writes does allow access to that color number. It's very useful. It looks a little intimidating, but once you figure out what's going on, it's pretty darn simple. Here we have uh, the very first declaration we have is a byte, an array of bytes called color cache. Now this is a array of bytes that we're reading back from the color sensor. So the color sensor and any other I2C sensors, they are made up of a array of registers, and each register has its own value. And this byte array is the registers we are reading back. Remember that arrays start by counting at zero. So the first spot in an array is position zero, and then it, it moves up from there. We're only going to be reading back one uh, byte, but we need to read it back as an array. We also have an I2C device called uh, color. Now I call it color C because I gave a I2C address to this color sensor of 0x3C. Well, that's the default address. So I call it color C. Now if you have this in a specific spot on your robot, you call it something that is more specific to your application. We're also going to use I2C device sync. This makes it a lot easier to do those reads and writes. We're going to call this color C reader. This is what you're actually going to use to do the reads and writes for your color sensor. We have a touch sensor. This is the same as the previous programs where you touch the touch sensor and it will uh, change the mode of the color sensor. Then we have the current touch state. So this is if the touch sensor is pressed or is not pressed. Uh, and this is actually the, the touch state from the last, last time around the loop. Let's look at that in a second. And then the LED state, this is a little misleading. This is actually the mode, uh, but we are calling it LED state here because that's what's called in the actual color sensor class. LED state is if your LED on the color sensor is taking an active part in reading, so your color sensor is in active mode, uh, meaning it's filtering out ambient light like the light from the color beacon. Or if it's false, LED is off, it's just taking readings of the ambient light like the light from the color beacon. So those are the, uh, the, the instances we'll need to make before we start the program. Inside init, we're going to, uh, just like you would with any other sensor, we're going to say that color C is a I2C device, and I name it CC. C for color, and C for it's my color sensor named, uh, or with address 0x3C, which is default address. Then we're going to need to tell it what the uh, I2C address is for the simple sync implementation. So we're going to say that the, because it's not it's not a general, it doesn't know what type of sensor it really is. We're calling it color C, but it doesn't know if it's a range sensor, it's a color sensor. So there's no default address. We need to tell it what that is. So we're going to say that the reader is a new implementation of I2C device symbol sync. Uh, we're going to use the name of what the sensor is. So this reader is reading this sensor, which we just told it where it is on the robot. It has an I2C address of 0x3C. You should use the 8-bit, not the 7-bit address. Uh, if you don't know what the address of your color sensor is, if you may have changed it, you can use Core Device Discovery. That's on our website. And we're going to say false. And we, we don't need to go into all the details of that. And we're going to engage a sensor. So that's all that needs to happen during initialization. When we get down to uh, when we want to change a mode, when uh, we press start, we want this to happen one time. We're going to set the mode so it always starts with the same mode. We're doing this with a variable, the LED state. So that way, to change the mode initially, we can just change this value from true to false. If LED state is true, which it is, it's going to set the mode to zero, which is active mode. Uh, if it is false, we're going to set passive mode. So this is how you're going to write. Write eight means you're writing eight bits, so you're writing a whole byte. And how many of them? In, in what position? Um, so here we're writing to register three, which is the mode register. And this is a value you're going to write to it. So register 3, 0 means we're going to set active mode. Register 3, 1, we're going to set passive mode. But we're only going to do this part uh, with how we initialize that variable above. That's it for, for our starting part. For the loop, this is part that's going to happen over and over. This part here is the same as it was before. So I'm going to explain this just in case you haven't seen it. But the idea is 
with the EEPROM of the color sensor, uh, it's bad practice to write to EEPROM as long-term memory. It's bad practice to write to that long-term memory every single time through the loop because it only has a life of something around 100,000 writes. And that sounds like a lot, but your program is going really fast. So if you write to that color sensor every single time you go through a loop, it's going to shorten the life of your color sensor. So what we're doing here is if the touch sensor is pressed and it was not touched last time, so touch date is if it was touched last time. So if it was not touched last time and it is touched this time, I mean it's just now touched the first time. This is the first time we're going through a loop where it is touched. Then we're going to say it is touched, so that way next time we go through a loop we know it was touched last time. We're going to take the opposite of LED state and set to LED state, so we're going to change what LED state is. And we're going to need to keep that in memory so we can toggle between the two. And then we will set the mode of the color sensor using LED state. So after we change that, then it'll change that mode. Now, when you press the touch sensor, it's going to go through this loop multiple, multiple times. So if it goes through this loop again, or it's going to, while you still have the touch sensor pressed before you release it, it's going to come around again, and it's going to see, oh, well, touch state is true, so I'm not going to do that again. It's going to wait until it's not pressed before it goes and presses again. Now, another way we could resolve this is instead of doing all this tracking if it was touched last time, we could say while it is touched, just wait. So that's going to put delays in our program, and while it's waiting for us to release the button, it's not going to be doing anything. It's, it's not as elegant. The last part we need to do is tell it when you change the touch state when it's not pressed. So if the touch sensor is not pressed, we're not going to change the mode, but we're going to tell it, we're going to keep in, in our variable that it was not pressed. So the next time, if it is pressed, we can go through and change LED state again. So that part has nothing to do with using this new, well, it's using the right function. But conceptually, it has nothing, to, or yeah, conceptually, it has nothing to do with using this uh, I2C generic read and write. So we've gone through the reads, or the writes. We're going to now do a read. So the color cache, remember the color cache is a array of bytes. But I don't have, uh, you know, usually when you use arrays, you'll have something like, well, I'm doing index zero. Well, if I said color cache index zero, that would actually just be a byte. It wouldn't be an array of bytes. So if I put no uh, specification after that, that just means I'm rewriting an entire array. So this entire array is going to be rewritten with this. Now this one here means that we're only going to read for one byte, just one register, and we are going to start at position 0x04. Now position 4 on the color sensor is the color number. The color number represents a value of the color spectrum according to this cool chart here. It's really neat, it's really useful, there's a lot less math involved, it's, it's nice to have. Um, so we're going to read starting at 0x04 for one byte, meaning that our array is only going to be one in length, and then we're going to save it as color cache. And we're saving it, you know, we could just take this whole thing and put it in here and say index zero, uh, but we're going to save it so then between here you can put in your own things as far as making decisions. One thing you could do is make the blue LED or red LED turn on on your core device interface uh, if, it's, if it's looking at red or blue, or you could have it, your robot's going to make decisions based off this, is you're going to use your sensor values and not just displaying the telemetry. But in this example program, we're just displaying telemetry. So we're going to save that in the color cache, and uh, remember it's only a length of one, and we start counting at zero. So that color number is now saved in color cache array at index zero. So right here, this is our color number variable. That's where we can get our color number from. So I'm saving this as, uh, we're going to take a look at a, another example in a second. That's two color sensors. So this is my second color sensor, um, color number. This is my color number. And when I end it with 0xff, that means it's going to display it as a positive integer, not as negative integer. If we did not have that, it would actually display a value that'd be some like negative 120 something. Because if we didn't have the 0xff, it actually display it as a number between negative 128 and positive 127, something around that range. When we have 0xff, it's actually going to display the number between 0 and 255. Now the register doesn't return all those values, but when we end a byte with 0xff, it means it's going to display it as just positive numbers. So it's going to shift them all up instead of doing positive and negative values with um, halfway in the middle being zero. So you're going to display that to the driver station. So use this program, download it in your configuration file, uh, create a CC, create a touch sensor named T, 
and see how that goes. Uh, look at that telemetry data coming back to your driver station and see how that works with your color beacon. Make sure you're testing it with the color sensor in active mode and passive mode. Test out the difference between those two. Now, let's take one more look, uh, this will be really quick, at another example that's using two color sensors and see what that's going to take uh, to do. So this program can also be downloaded from modernroboticsedu.com and we just have two color sensors instead of one. So you'll need, it's really simple, all the stuff that we went through except the touch sensor, you'll just need two of. So instead of one uh, byte array where you are keeping the values, you're going to need two. Two IDC devices, two um, device six, uh, only one touch sensor. You could do two if you wanted to. Um, I just have one touch sensor that's controlling both of them. And then you're going to do both of the hardware mapping. You're going to set the IGC addresses of both of them. Whoa, wait a second. But they have the same I2C address to start with. Yeah. So this is default IGC address 0x3C. I changed one of them to have an I2C address of 0x3A. And I did this using core device discovery. Really easy. Go to modernroboticsinc.com uh, or go to the EDU website on the color sensors section. And it, the color sensors section of modernroboticsedu.com will actually step you through the steps of how to change an I2C address. Super simple. Engage both of them. And notice here how my name conventions match. So I have color A, color C, color A, color C, color A, color C, color A, color C, so on, so on, so on. Here, C, A, C, C. Beautiful. Same thing. Uh, I have one touch sensor. I'm just doing it to both of the color sensors whenever I do anything. And then I bring it back. I read both of them, and then I display both of them. Super simple. Um, and once you go through it and kind of understand what's going on, you can also read the comments in here um, if I went through anything a little bit too fast. So download this code, give it a shot, try out that color number. It's going to make your program a lot easier to use.